that you join us in worship. Who am I? This is a question you have certainly asked yourself before. And while there are many ways to come to an answer, as Christians, we can always answer this question by simply affirming that we are members of God's family. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. At first glance, some people might argue that this kind of answer might be too easy. However, being called to be part of God's family holds much more meaning than it seems. God is not only the creator of everything, He is also the provider of everything we need. And while He graciously gives us all that we need, His greatest gift of all is His Son, Jesus. It's through Jesus' sacrifice that we find a sense of purpose and meaning to life. Being a member of God's family has far-reaching implications. As members of God's family, we should do more than love and obey the Creator. We must also share the privilege and responsibility of carrying out His will on earth. As family, there are no natural boundaries between us. This makes us daughters, sons, sisters, brothers, and stewards of the same heritage. In order to thrive in these roles assigned to us by Christ, He wisely left us instructions on how to properly carry out this mission. In Matthew 6.19, while talking to a rich young ruler, Jesus instructed him on how to best use his worldly needs. If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. As members of God's family, we must also head this instruction and invest in eternity. We must use our blessings to bless others and allow nothing to prevent anyone from following Jesus. After all, the real treasure is not our financial resources or goods here on earth, 
but the blessings that will come when God's family is reunited. God has created and redeemed us to be His stewards. So let's study the Bible daily and grow in together in God. Happy Sabbath, church. They don't sound like you have eaten any lunch. Happy Sabbath, church. We are here to worship the Lord this evening, you know. God is indeed a wonderful God to each and every one of us. Let me hear you praise the Lord. Let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. We are small in number, but we are one or two is gathered. In anything concerning God's name, the Holy Spirit is here with us. Right? Amen? And so before we start, with our, we are from the Elsha District of Churches. And we are here this evening to worship with you. And before we start, we are going to ask you to just stand so that we can invite the Holy Spirit within our presence. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to worship you today, we ask that it be unto your name's honor and glory. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome, 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 blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill our temple, Holy Ghost, we welcome you. We welcome you. Come with power and fill our temple. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. A magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. A magnet. A magnet. It's moving there, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. A magnet. A magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. A magnet. A magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. A magnet. A magnet. It's moving here, moving there. Just like the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are braver, much braver than the lily that goes by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold one more time. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that goes by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. He never fails me yet, he never fails me yet. Jesus Christ never fails me yet. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know. Jesus Christ never fails me yet. He never fails me yet. He never fails me yet. Jesus Christ never fails me yet. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know. Jesus Christ never fails me yet. Daniel, God surely will deliver. Daniel's God surely will deliver if you only look to him if it Daniel's God surely will deliver Daniel's God surely will deliver Daniel's God, 
yes, God, surely will deliver. If you only look to Him by faith, and yes, God, surely will deliver. Oh, yes, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. He's the lily of the valley. He's as bright as morning star. Tell me who made the joy bells ring and tell me who is the king of kings, nobody but my Lord. Tell me who made the angels sing and tell me who made the joy bells ring and tell me who is the king of kings, nobody but my Lord. Yes, he made the world, he made the sea and land, fast he met together with his mighty hands. Under his control, under his command, nobody but my Lord. Who made the angels sing and tell me who? Made the joy bells ring and tell me who? Is the King of Kings? Nobody but my Lord. My mind and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, oh, and I won't turn back. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. World. I stay no longer with you, goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you, I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Goodbye world, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin I stay no longer with you I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life It soon be done It must be done All the troubles and the trials When I get home on the other side I'm gonna shake my hands with the elders I'm gonna tell all the people good morning I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while It soon be done It soon be done All the troubles and the trials All the troubles and trials When I get home On the other side shake my hands with the elders i'm gonna tell all the people good morning i'm gonna sit down beside my jesus i'm gonna sit down and rest a little while real 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 christ so real to me hallelujah i love him because he gave us the victory many people many people doubt him but I can't do without him That is why I love him so He's so real to me I really, 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 really Real, real, real Christ so real to me Hallelujah I love him Because he gave us the victory Many people Many people doubt him But I can't do without him 
That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. I'm going to walk those streets of glory by and by. I'm going to walk those streets of glory by and by. I'm going to walk those streets of glory. I'm going to see redemption story. I'm going to walk those streets of glory by and by. I'm going to walk those streets of glory by and by. Okay, can you please stand with me as we share our scripture reading for this evening, please? That is Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. And it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. 
Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a uh, good afternoon that you have blessed us with, Lord. As we go into our AY program, I pray that you bless our presenter, that as she comes, she'll bring something insightful to us. I pray that you bless the congregation, that they will also take something from this evening. In your name I pray. Amen. Good afternoon, AY. I'm very sorry to ask you this, but those of you who are sitting, please stand for our emblems. The aim, the Advent message to all the world in my generation. The motto, for the love of Christ compels us. The AY pledge, by the grace of God, I'll be pure and kind and true. I will keep the AY law. I'll be a servant of God and a friend to man. The senior pledge. Loving the Lord Jesus, I promise to take an active part in the youth ministry of the church, doing what I can to help others and to finish the work of the gospel in all the world. The AY law. The AY law is for me to keep the morning watch, do my honest part, Care for my body, keep a level eye, be courteous and obedient, walk softly in the sanctuary, keep a song in my heart, go on God's errand. The, the song? seated. So this afternoon, our AY program will be... Are you hearing me? Okay, no problem. So this afternoon, our AY program will be done by those from the Hellshire District. LHSD, if I remember correctly, and our presentation this afternoon will be done by Mrs. Sotania Fru, and she will be doing a presentation about the breath of life and the benefits of pure air. And so, in this afternoon's program, let us all give our undivided attention, and let us all, at the end, hopefully come away with some information that could be useful to us in our everyday lives. So at this time, we will now turn over to Sister Diana. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, family. Because when I come to Sydney, I know it's no stranger business. We are family. So it doesn't matter how long we have not seen each other. Happy Sabbath, family. How are you feeling? See Murray with his plastic smile. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. It's always happy, happy time for me when I come home. Because this is home. And when I come home, I feel at home. And this is my family, the Sydenham Seventh-day Adventist Church, but I've also garnered extended family members. And let me tell you a little bit about my extended family. My extended family is the Elshire Park District of Churches. And some of my extended family members, they are with me this afternoon. So let me hear my family say amen. Let me hear them say amen again. Beautiful. 
And so for our song service, we had a blend of Elshire Park SDA and Greater Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. And throughout our program, we'll be having specials from Greater Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church members and from the Elshire Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. But we do also have some other persons from that district that is worshiping with us, but they won't be participating. So I'm going to ask all the members from Elshire Park District of Churches to please stand and give my home church a wave. All the entire part district of churches, don't be shy. You know you're not shy. Give them a wave. And we also have Pastor Richard with us and Gabriella, which we adopted into the Sydenham Seventh-day Adventist Church family, right? And now he's spearheading there in the Elshire Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I also have a new founded extended family that I recently met and you will be seeing her shortly. Her name is Sister Sutania Frey. And she will be worshiping with us. And she's originally from the St. John's Seventh-day Adventist Church. But I'll be sharing a little bit more about her in just a moment. So before I get into what we will actually be discussing, we have some two members from the Elshire Park Seventh-day Adventist Church that will now be sharing with us a special and then we will continue with our service. Let me hear the church say amen. There's a spiritual warfare, right, brethren? You know, sometimes we want to do right, and there's this voice saying, don't do the right thing. You know, but... You know, we need to hunger for holiness and for righteousness. And so I hope that this song will just remind you that we need to long and thirst for righteousness and holiness. There's a silent war that's raging deep within me. My lower nature fights to dominate. My spirit man is poised and locked in battle. With the carnal side of me, I've grown to hate. The trumpet of my prayers plays towards heaven. A voice of desperation in my cry. Lord, strengthen me that I might not yield myself to sin. But keep your righteous banner lifted high. Lord, I about me as a lion searching for the slightest sense of love for when the skin of my resistance is broken he moves swiftly into deep and the cut O oh Lord of creation a servant, you 
you understand the weakness of man I'm counting myself crucified with Jesus Alive to Christ and dead indeed to sin Lord, I Amen, church. Lord, I hunger for your righteousness. This afternoon, we are here to speak a little bit or much about health. Now, health is not merely the absence of diseases. Health is really the harmonious balance of the mental, the physical, the emotional, the social, and the spiritual. But sometimes we tend to focus a little bit on some parts of health and we somewhat forget about the holistic health. And so this afternoon we are going to be discussing something that is not frequently talked about. And some persons put health in a box. When they hear about a health program, some persons think of boredom. Some people think of their pot, that we are going to touch their pot, that they can't eat this and we can't eat that. And so we are not going to focus on what you can and cannot eat this afternoon. We're going to focus on clean, pure air. Breath of life is our general theme, exploring the secrets of pure air. And when we have Sister Susania Frey comes, she will give us a subtopic for this afternoon. So let me see the hands of those who agree that clean air is important. Can anybody tell me why? And we just have a small window here for this little discussion right here. And it's just one question. Can somebody tell me why clean air is important? Whether it be my family or my extended family, come speak up. Why is clean air important? No, not one. Brethren? For health? What did you say, Nordia? 
so that you can breathe fresh air. All right, no problem, I'll take that. So it's for good health and so that you can breathe fresh air, fine. I will take those two. So clean air is important for maintaining good health, Sister Alicia, and well-being such as respiratory, cardiovascular, and also our cognitive or mental health. And the purpose of today's program is to explore the benefits of clean air and the potential effects of cleaning agents on indoor air quality. Because I'm betting some persons use products in their home not realizing that some of these products are really causing ill health. But I won't give away too much, that is Titania's part. So one, we said that the benefits of clean air we'll be looking at. And two, we'll be looking at the effects of cleaning agents on indoor air quality, quality. And we'll also be looking at volatile organic compounds and the acronym VOCS. And three, we'll explain how common household cleaning agents can release volatile organic compounds, which as a result contributes to indoor air pollution. We will also discuss the potential health effects of exposure to VOCs, including headaches, dizziness, and respiratory irritation. And five and last, we will look at strategies for reducing exposure and offer tips for minimizing exposure to harmful cleaning agents. And so to lead us and to navigate us this afternoon into that discussion is Sister Tutania Frey, who began her career as a chemical engineer, spending over 11 years in the food and bauxite industry. While her engineering background provided a strong foundation, her passion really shifted towards health and wellness. And since 2013, she has served and been serving as a medical missionary, guiding individuals towards natural health solutions. And now as a health entrepreneur, she provides wellness solutions to corporate and individual clients, fostering a culture of informed decision making around physical, emotional, mental, financial, and spiritual well-being. And her mission really is to empower individuals to make informed choices about their lifestyle, leading to a healthier and a happier world. So the Lord says we ought to occupy until he comes. But before Sister Sutania Phrase come and speak with us on the topic that will be discussed, we will have unique vocals from the Greater Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church sharing a message with us in song, and then the next voice we'll hear is that of Sustanio Free. Amen? Oh, my. 
church right you sound much much better wasn't that lovely singing boy if I didn't feel the hand of God touching me before I just felt it a while ago thank you so much church um, the Hellshire District of Church is for your lovely singing it is so wonderful and this is one of the things that we're known as Adventists for a great wonderful a heartfelt singing and I just want to also say thank you to sister Diana for giving me this invitation to be here to um to just share share some information that I learned you know um some of them knew recently and I just want to also sh thank you Sydney for allowing me to use the platform to you know share this information to the congregation. I am so happy to be here, right? And boy, we have a lot of things to discuss. We have a lot of things to discuss today and I hope that at the end of it, it will not just be information, but it will be wisdom, right? Because wisdom is knowledge applied. And I hope that every single person will be able to take something from this presentation that they can apply in their homes, in their lives. So before I begin, I just want to whisper a prayer that God will allow me to speak on his behalf and not of my own. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Eternal Father, we give you thanks for life. We give you thanks for air. We give you thanks for your provision. We give you thanks for rest. We give you thanks for the eight laws of health that we're able to come into your sanctuary and learn of you and learn of your ways. As we're about to go into this presentation, Almighty God, I pray that you will be with me. Help me to bring across the information with clarity so that... The, it may be connected, and at the end of the day, your people will be blessed. We give you thanks, we give you the honor, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so as Sister Diana said, a little introduction, I'm Sutania Fru. Um, I know some persons came to me and said that, you know, I, rem I remember the Sutania Right, the last name is a little bit different though, because I got married, you know, a couple of years ago. It was Titania Davins before, and funny enough, Sydney is a church that I normally visit a lot, 
And whenever we have district sports day, you know, when I was growing up, I normally came to this church. I remember when it was only that building over here. So I've been a part of the church for a little tad, and I hope that, you know, at the end of this presentation, you will not just see me as, you know, from the St. John's District of Churches, but also as family here. So our topic today, we're talking about the laws of health. Um, how many of us here are aware of the laws of health? Can you name them? Or one person name one. Anybody know of the laws of health, the eight laws of health? Yes, sis. Um, could you assist her with a mic for me? The eight laws of health. New Start, right. The acronym New Start. So what does New Start mean? There's another one called God's Plan. God's Plan. Go ahead. New Start is nutrition. Yes. Exercise. W water. Mm -hmm. Start is sleep. No. Sunshine. Yes. Trust. No. T What's T again? Temperance. I'm getting old. Temperance. E. R. Rest. Mm -hmm. S. T. A. R. A. A. Air. Yes. And T for trust in God. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. What's your name, Sister? Grant. Sister Grant. What? Um, look at that. We have some A students in the place. Thanks, Sister Grant. Perfectly, perfectly said, you know, new start, right? Those basically represent the laws of health. And there's actually a ninth one, which is hygiene, right? So, um, because hygiene is the foundation of health as well. So yes, absolutely. And who can tell me what the first law of health is according to spirit of prophecy? What's the first law of health? And I want you, yes, anybody, just take a guess from the new start. What is it? I'm not hearing. Can someone pass the mic down for me, please? The sister over there was saying something. You can raise your hand so that we can identify who was speaking. There was a little baby there. <laughs> All right. According to spirit of prophecy, actually, pure air. Pure air. So it's not just air, right? It's pure air. And think about it. Why you think that of all the laws of health, pure air is number one? Just take a guess. Think about, you know, the importance of pure air. I want the congregation to talk to me, you know, man. I don't want this to be a lecture. I want it to be very interactive. Why you, do you think that pure air probably is the first law of health? Life. Perfectly said. Thank you. Because we can go weeks without water, right? We can go weeks without food. We can go days without water, weeks without food. But we can only go what? Probably minutes without pure air. So as the sister said right there is... If there is no pure air, there is no life, and nothing else matters, right? So that's why we're going to focus on that law in the law of health. But we're going to take it from a different standpoint, because most time when we think of pure air, we think of what? We think of, what you call it now, the smog in the city. We think of garbage on the outside. What else we think of? All right. We think of garbage on the outside, right? We think of things that are what? Out of our control. But we're going to look at it from a different standpoint today. 
the things that are within our control. And I'm going to quote some facts that, for me, they were mind-blowing. So I, I, I'm hoping that you will share a similar sentiment. sentiment. So I hope you can see my screen there. And the topic today is, are you fighting grime while arresting your health? Are you fighting grime? Are you cleaning your house? Or, or are you damaging your health? Because a lot of us love to clean, don't it? And some of us, that's our jobs. So it means that, and everybody, even the kids, get involved in cleaning. So this topic is something that every single person can relate to. Even the gentlemen, the washing of the dishes that they normally participate in. I'm stereotyping, guys, because I know that many men actually participate in all um, the cleaning of the home. So we're going to talk about cleaning, but when you're cleaning, are you harming your health? All right, we're going to move on to the next slide. Now, when we look at health, we talk about diseases, right? We think about diseases. Why are we having these diseases? And you know that Ministry of Healing says, disease is an effort of nature to free the systems from conditions that results from the violation of the laws of health. So the curse causes less doesn't come. There's no disease that comes without a cause. So whenever there is illness in the body, the aim is to find out the root cause. What is driving this? What is causing this disease? Now, Let me, next slide. Pure air. Pure air, we spoke about the laws of health. We spoke about the laws of health before. And I want us to do a quick exercise in terms of how we breathe. Many of us are chest breathers, but we don't breathe from our diaphragm. So I'm going to do a quick exercise for us to take a deep breath and I want everybody to just stand with me and I'm going to show you how you're actually supposed to be breathing deeply to have good inspiration of air. So this is how you're supposed to get your um, fresh air in. So I want you to take four short breaths in consecutively so don't let it out keep it in four so we're going to say four short breath in right hold it for seven seconds and then we're going to let out completely without taking anything in for eight seconds got that four short breath short breath in hold for seven release for eight all right so we're going to start after two one two Let out. Everybody got that? All right. Was it difficult? It was difficult because we're not used to breathing like that, right? So we're going to do it again. Four in, seven hold, eight out, right? Come again after two. One, two. <laughs> good job, good job. How do you feel? Does it feel different? Do you feel your stomach working? Do you feel your tummy doing some work when you're breathing? When you did that exercise? Yeah, right. So I want us to practice that because that is how the blood is going to get the air that it needs. Now, 
the strength of your system is in a great degree dependent on the amount of pure air that you breathe. How many of us, when we find that we're in certain, what you call it, no, you're not getting enough air, you find that you're, you're not concentrating well. Has that ever happened to you and you get headache? All right, let me give an example. Have you ever cleaned the bathroom and you're there cleaning the bathroom and you feel like your head hurting you? Or you feel faintish? Yeah? Or you feel fatigue? Have you ever been in a building that has a lot of just the AC going around and around and around and you just feel like you can't concentrate well at work? Has that ever happened to you? That is as a consequence of not getting fresh air. Because guess what? In order for your brain and your body to function, you need good blood. The foundation of a healthy body is good blood. And in order for you to have good blood, it requires good nutrition, and it requires those red blood cells to have air. So if you don't have good um, air coming in, one, right, your blood vessels under the microscope won't look bright red. They would look, look a little dark, right? So it means that your body is not getting enough nourishment. And if you're not getting water too, you'll see that the blood vessels clump. So that is the foundation of having good, um, pure air in the blood. Next slide. <laughs> now, these are some of the um, ailments that not having fresh air cause. And I'm going to share a story. Sister Diana said that I worked in the bauxite industry for a couple of years, right? And anybody knows the bauxite industry? Have you ever passed out by Uarton or in Clarendon and you smell that air? Some of us have, right? So in the bauxite industry, what they do is that they convert the red dirt that you see into a white powder, which is used to make aluminum. So those aluminum files and pots and aircraft that you know, we see around us, it comes from red dirt. Did you know that? Fun fact, right? No. My responsibility was to ensure that the process goes well. So I'm working in a plant that uses a lot of chemicals. And some of those chemicals are very toxic, right? Toxic to the point that if they ever go on your skin, depending on the heat, it will destroy your skin completely. And been, having been there for about eight plus years, I've seen two incidents where our co-workers have been damaged by exposure, pump burst, right? It's a dangerous environment, but we have safety precautions as much as possible. And when, you know, with the hot chemical, sodium hydroxide, the pump exploded, Right, not sure why. And the caustic soda got on the gentleman's skin who was working on it. And he lost his skin. He lost his sight. He couldn't come. Thank God he's still alive because where there is life, there is hope. Right? But he was unable to come back to work. Right? He had on his safety gears. But unfortunately, where he was, he could not escape fast enough. And the chemical got onto his skin. I was in an incident where I was in the lab doing an experiment and handling chemicals, have on my gears and everything. And somehow in doing the experiment, 
the goggles went up because I was wiping the sweat and I was washing up the utensils and I was handling caustic soda. And when I was washing, it got into my eye. Fortunately, we were trained on, you know, emergency action. So I went and I flushed. And only God knows why I'm still seeing today, right? I said that to say that sometimes the environment that we're working in or the things that we're using, we take it for granted because that same chemical that destroyed that man's life and almost injured me significantly, it's in a lot of your cleaning agents. It's called sodium hydroxide. The reason why many of us have not had a more impactful or serious injury is because of the concentration that it is in. But it is important to know that it is there and you should wear gloves and respirators if you're handling it, right? So I'm going to talk about some of those chemicals, how to look for them and how we can um, have substitutes. But one of the things that was mind blowing to me is this. The American Lung Association, so this is facts, gentle folks. The American Lung Association has declared that up to half of illnesses are either aggravated by or caused by polluted air. Going to say it again. Up to half of the illnesses that we are experiencing are caused by or aggravated by polluted air. So even though you have these diseases and you're making these changes in terms of your diet, if you don't change what is happening in your environment in terms of your air quality, you're going to still be suffering. So you're wondering, oh my God, I'm, I made my diet change, but the hypertension and the diabetes is still on me. Ooh, I made, I, I start exercising and drinking water, but I'm still having hormonal imbalance. Where is this coming from? What have you done to change your air quality? And also the American Lung Association, as well as the EPA says that indoor air quality is two to five times, even up to a hundred times more polluted than outdoor air. Did you know that? So a lot of us, we run into the country for country living because we want pure air, right? Yes, you should. But if you do not make the changes in terms of your indoor air quality, will you be reaping the benefits of country living? No. So what are the things that affect our indoor air quality? What is the sources of our indoor air pollutant? You cannot see up there, but can somebody tell me a couple of the sources of our indoor air pollutant? Afternoon, AY. It says that nutrition is the source of life. Mm -hmm. um, some of the endurances are dust, mm -hmm. smoking, um, smoking, the dust. Those are some of the things that Absolutely. can can affect. They um, stop us from breathing properly, breathing fresh air. The, the environment is toxic. Absolutely. So when we have the rainfall, it is to have little, you don't have to have a lot of rain, but when you have a little bit of rain, it is very important 
in order for us to breathe fresh air because of the smoking and the dust and those things that pollute the area yes. or the environment. Yes, thank you, Sister Rupo. Right. No, she's perfect and correct, right? And God in his grace gave us the rainfall to help reset the balance, right? So, and to get rid of some of the toxins that are in the air. So she said dust and smoking. Can you tell me some other ones? Think about it, gentle folks. Tell me some other ear pollutant in your home. I want us to brainstorm this. Anybody else? Air freshener, great, air fresheners. The, the perfume, the cleaning agents, anything else? The bleach, wow, yes, absolutely, what else? Did you know that mold? Mold is one of the most dangerous indoor air pollutants. How many of us have mold? You don't have to raise your hand, right? But I want you to go home and investigate the crevices in your home. I want you to look at the tree that is nearby you, if it is dying. Look to see if there is mold there. There's a reason why Sister White, you know, suggests that we you know, encourages us, recommends that we do not have big trees and so forth near our windows, right? Because if mold gets in, if we have leaking roofs that you're not attending to it and, you know, this dampness, sometimes it's in our closet. A friend of mine had mold infestation in our closet because it's dark and damp. And that's where mold. And I had an experience with that as well. And a number of things started coming out on my skin when I was at work, the office that I was in. You know, AC, not properly ventilated, right? So the dampness, the leaking AC, we went and we cleared it out, cleaned out the mold properly because I started having some things coming up on my skin, right? And people, you know, were experiencing challenges before but because I knew that these things caused these I was able to identify the root cause so yes definitely our cleaners mold smoke even our bedding the frequency with which you change your bedding is important even your mattress you know when I used to grow up mommy used to say carry out the mattress go son you remember that? Do we still do that? We should if we don't, right? Now, moving on. So I want us, have you ever stopped to consider that the chemicals in your cleaning products could be dangerous? Most people don't even understand how serious these toxic chemicals are and how they're impacting your, your health on a day-to-day -day basis. What are the two largest organs of absorption and elimination in the body? Can anybody tell me? The skin is one. What is the other one? What is the other one? The lungs. Perfect. Oh, you guys are so bright. Thank you. <laughs> so the skin and the lungs. And do, do you realize that air quality affects both the skin and the lungs as well as what you put on your skin? That's important as well. Now, some of the most harmful types of conventional cleaning products, such as your hand sanitizers, Everybody loves the fragrant stuff, the sweet, sweet, right? You love to smell sweet. Did you know that a lot of the, the thing that is causing it to smell sweet is a toxin, is a toxic chemical? I'm going to talk about it a little later. The fabric softener and the dryer sheet. Now, I'm going to play a video. 
to show you what is happening out there in the world with our cleaning chemicals. This is from ABC Report. So I'm just gonna play the video now. Hopefully you can see it. Audio. dangers. A new report says it's not the air outside you should be worried about. Instead, it's what you're breathing inside your home. The night team's Christina Rendon is live in our kitchen with the concern. Christina. Well, do you really know what's under your kitchen or bathroom sink? Well, new research shows that everything from air fresheners to products like these may be harmful to your lungs or contain formaldehyde, a known carcinogen. Clorox one tough cleaner. Dozens of products promise to work best. Calcium, lime, rust, it doesn't matter, baby, kaboom. But are they the best for your health? It's been really well, it smells good. Many name brand cleaners aren't making the grade, according to the Environmental Working Group. They researched over 2,000 household products and found only a few cleaners contain safe ingredients or tell you what's actually inside on the label. I'm surprised, like for instance, with food, you have to list everything, every ingredient that's on there. Take all-purpose cleaners. Out of 400 tested, only 5.3% got an A, 39.6% got an F. Like Clorox Cleanup, researchers found links to asthma. In bathroom cleaners, 2.4% scored high, but 56.5% failed, including Kaboom Foamtastic. The EWG says it has chemicals that could cause cancer. Carly Hagland and Martha Fetzer are concerned. Not really so much the cancer causing, but certainly things like respiratory diseases and asthma. The laundry list continues with, well, laundry. 44% got an F, like downy ultrafabric softener and gain. The detergent may be linked to developmental and reproductivity toxins. If you're that sensitive or allergic or are concerned, then it's up to you to, to seek out the products that suit you. I just think you need to be informed before you purchase anything. And Utah's Poison Control Center says it's normal for products to not list everything contained on the labels, and they're only harmful if you abuse their use. We've put the entire list of products and grades on our website for you to decide. Go to abc4.com and click on the orange box. Live in our kitchen, Christina Redone, ABC4 News, Night Team. Was that shocking? Was that new information to anybody? I want you to raise your hand of some of the chemicals that they mentioned before. I want you to raise your hand if you have used or are you using any of those currently. Raise your hand. All right, let me do it another way. If you do not use any of those products that are harmful that they mentioned a while ago, if you have never used it, put up your hand. So all of us are at risk, right? No, she made a very important point in the last part of the video, which says, you know, um, our poison control authority says that if you abuse the use of these products, that's when they become toxic. Correct. But also, I want you to think about this. Your body. If you put something, imagine you have a little box, and you keep on adding stuff to it without taking anything out. What is going to happen? It's going to, get, it's going to fill up and overflow. So what is happening over the years, remember, this is what we use daily. This is what we use weekly. And over the years, we keep adding the toxins to our body. We keep inhaling it. We keep adding it to our skin. We're not, uh, how many of us are intentional about doing cleanses and detox? So we're not eliminating it at the same rate that we are taking it in. In chemical engineering, we call that um, accumulation. Input versus output, if the 
input is greater than the output, you end up with accumulation. That's what's happening in your body. You're ending up with a toxic load and your body is going to get to a point where it is not able to process it anymore. Your liver is beautifully designed by God to eliminate regular, regular environmental things. But there are so many things that we are taking in as toxins that are outside of our control. Why would we want to add something to our toxic load that is within our control? So I want you to think as we go through this presentation, how much accumulation is, in, is within me and when is going to be my breaking point? And how can I prevent myself from getting there? Now, this study says Canada, Canadians spend on average 90%. Canadian Americans and Jamaicans, we have similar habits, right? We spend more than 90% of our time indoor. Is that true for most of us? Because we're inside and then we go to work and we spend most of our days at work inside for a lot of us, right? No, what happened is that these cleaning products, they release what we call volatile organic compounds. So these are the fumes, in layman term, that you smell when you're handling these products. No, these are a major cause, as we mentioned before, um, to major cause of in poor indoor air quality. And it affects us in many ways. We mentioned before, nose irritation, um, skin issues, headaches. Interestingly enough, the liver, because you're creating this toxic load on the liver, after a while it won't manage it. The lungs itself, you keep damaging it because each time the lung inhales these toxic chemicals, it burdens it, it destroys it. It destroys your alveoli. And interestingly enough, it also damages your nervous system. Now, we're going to discuss the top 10 toxic household chemicals. But before we go to that, I'm going to show you the result from a study that the environmental working, sorry, the environmental defense of Canada did as it relates to VOCs. So what they did, they had a study where they had a number of participants using different kinds of chemicals in the house, right? And we're going to see from a statistical standpoint how the VOCs that are in our homes actually increases depending on the chemicals and the cleaners that you use. Now, VOCs naturally occurs in our home. We can't get, we, they're there. When you have the garbage, they're there. Anything spoiling, it's there, right? Or beddings, or, um, you know, or clothes, dirty clothes and so forth. They're there. Next slide, please. So you're going to see Next slide. You're going to see what happens here. I hope you can see it. Now, the blue lines represent what the typical um, VOC level before cleaning is. The black line represents the standard, so you should not have a VOC level of greater than the black line. The yellow lines represent um, Products that says that they are green, right? Because you do have products that boast to be green chemicals there, but they're not necessarily approved by the Safer Choice program. And the green ones represent those products that are um, approved by the Safer Choice program. They're green certified products. So if you look at this graph here, before cleaning, it was blue. After cleaning, so these are the participants over the side. After they cleaned with the conventional products, so these are the products that you go on the supermarket and you bite. And we have some of them displayed there. And I'm showing this because it's a part of the research. It's public information, right? When you use these products, when these participants use these products, 
That's what their VOC increased from. From less than a thousand for the most part in the blue line, all the way up to over 1,500 to 2,500. So there's a significant increase in your volatile organic compounds when you're using conventional cleaners. When you use products that are in the yellow, which is um, products that are you know, defined as green, they, ha they have green certified claims, there is still an increase above the threshold. Not as bad as the conventional one, but there is still an increase. And then the products that are green certified, meaning that they're approved by the um, Safer Choice program, and I'm going to talk a little bit about them. They basically, there is an increase, yes, but it's below the threshold. So they are what they call the safer choice because you do have an, an agency that actually goes through and identify chemicals that are considered safe, test them to ensure that they, they are safe, and place those on the market. So they tend to have the logo, Safer Choice Program. But not all chemicals go through that. It's an option. And you're actually not necessarily required to have the ingredients listed out on all your chemicals. So if you find some of those on the market, it's legal, but you don't know. So you're still at risk. Now, we're going to move on now to 10 toxic household items. So this is going to talk about the chemicals that we use clean, as well as some other things that we use that we should also consider getting out of our homes. Now, everybody in here use bleach, don't it? And how I grew up, when I have bleach, I'm invincible. So I'm going into the bathroom and I'm throwing whoosh, 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 you know, like any ninja. Anybody has that feeling? Yeah, anybody has that feeling when you have bleach, going into any germs, you're invincible? Yes, I had that feeling. But bleach is like the number one toxic household item because of the chlorine, the toxic fumes, and you smell it. And a lot of us use the full strength bleach, we're not even dilute it, right? How many of us know how much we're supposed to dilute bleach by for it to be effective? You know that there's a dilution ratio, right? <laughs> you just throw water, and you just throw bleach, right? I think it's one to 10. Right? It's either 1 to 10 or 1 to 100. I need to find it because I don't use bleach anymore, so I don't even remember the dilution ratio. Right? Because the truth is that if you use bleach in its concentrated form, not only does it create toxic fumes, but it also does, it's not as effective as if you actually do it in its, its right ratio. We actually did an experiment in the hospital. We had some cleaners coming in the hospital, in the surgery room. And you know, every, every, every place has their protocol. And they have a certain dilution of bleach. And the cleaner came in and said, that not clean the place good because the place now smell fresh. And she walked with her bleach powder and mixed for her own concentration. And then bacteria just started taking over the surgery room. And the, 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 the manager, they had to go and do an investigation, and that's how they found out that the cleaners were bringing their own chemicals and contaminating the place, and they did a test to find out that actually her higher concentration of bleach caused an increase in growth of bacteria than the diluted version. Never knew that, right? So, actually using the chemicals in their right concentration is important, right? But, for me, you need to stay away from bleach. Why? Because it increases COPD, right? Chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, chronic bronchitis. That's one of the classification of COPD, right? 
the bronchitis. And remember, we have babies. We have kids around us. So when we're cleaning, you're not just harming yourself, you're harming your children. Why would you want to put your kids at risk? Right? It's, a known, it, it's known to cause, cause asthma, right? And it, it's known to cause coughing. And I must mention this, gentle folks, do not mix bleach with any chemicals that you're buying. So even after this presentation and you choose to go back to your regular cleaners, do not mix the cleaners because reactions happen. And when these reactions happen, they form even more toxic chemicals that can kill you. It has happened before. I have seen people go into hospital while cleaning because they chose to mix chemicals. Do not mix bleach with chemicals, right? No. What are you going to use instead? You have lemon essential oils, you have distilled vinegar. So I brought a little do-it-yourself kit with me. So we're going to discuss things that you can do yourself with regular things that you have at home, as well as you can buy products that are approved by the Safer Choice program. Now we're going to look at some of what we can do at home with our do-it-yourself kit. So it's good to have around, this is what, seven products at home in your do-it-yourself kit, alcohol, baking soda, vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, essential oils, I said water, right? You know that you can make basically almost all the cleaners that you need with these here. There would be one more for the laundry, because these are surface cleaners and hand cleaners, which is washing soda. Right? That would be one more. But I'm going to show you some do-it-yourself recipes that you can use to replace some of these products. As well as, some. Oh, if, you're, if you're not a do-it-yourself person like my, myself, because I'm always on the go, and you just need to get safer products, those options are here as well. So we're going to move on to how do you make bleach. We're going to play the video. For this recipe, you'll need hot water, hydrogen peroxide, washing soda, lemons, and a big bucket. Cut two lemons into chunks and add them to your blender. Then add one cup of hydrogen peroxide to the blender and blend well until it becomes a slurry. Add hot water and the lemon slurry to the bucket and finish off by adding in your washing soda. Give it a quick stir and add in your garments that need to be bleached. Let them soak for eight hours, rinse them, and launder as usual. Pretty easy, right? Sounds easy enough. All right, we're going to move on to, so that is for bleaching the clothes, right? We're going to look at for disinfectant, which is what we use bleach for. For this recipe, you'll need rubbing alcohol, water, essential oils, a clean spray bottle. To your spray bottle, add one half cup rubbing alcohol, then add a half a cup of water, and 15 drops of thyme essential oil. Thyme is an excellent disinfecting essential oil. Give it a good shake and use this product as a mist after you've cleaned a surface with the appropriate cleaner to deal with any additional bacteria. That's easier, right? Do you have like most of those at home, most of those products at home? Yeah, you do. You know, what some of us may be missing is the essential oils, right? And we can get a few. You don't have to get a whole lot, but there are some key ones like your tea tree oil, your lemon oil, your thyme, right? Those are good antimicrobial, antiviral type of essential oils, and they give a nice smell. 
right? Now, the second one is the antibacterial hand soap. How many of us have an antibacterial hand soap at our home? Yeah. You know what is dangerous about those? It contains what you call triclosan. Now, this was mind-blowing to me. The problem with antibacterial is that you know that your body has normal flora, right? You have bacteria on your skin. There is a reason for the bacteria on your skin. You know that, the natural ones. There is a reason for the bacteria, bacteria in your stomach. It is to protect you. So if you keep on destroying the bacteria on your skin, how is it going to protect you? So that is why you have to be cautious about antimicrobial hand wash. You kind of really don't need them. You need just wash with soap and water. You'll be fine. Most of us not handling really serious germs like that to require antimicrobial, right? But the danger in terms of chemical is the triclosan. I want you to put up your hand if you know someone who is suffering from hormonal imbalance, fibroid, endometriosis, heavy menses, heavy menses. Put up your hand if you know somebody who is suffering from one of those. Put it up high, man, so I can't see. All four. I learned this, especially for us as ladies. You know that triclosan in these products is an endocrine disruptor that supports us having these diseases, these issues as females. Infertility. So you're there and you make your dietary change and you do all of this and you do all of that and you're using the antimicrobial soap that has the triclosan that is going on your skin every single day, multiple times per day, accumulating in your body and you're wondering why you can't get pregnant. Why are you having painful cramps? Why this fibroids won't go away? and I'm practicing the laws of health. Check your antibacterial soap. Check your lotion. Check your body wash. Check for triclosan. So the next time you go out to purchase any one of these, turn the label around and read it. And look for this product, right? that affects your health. And it is found in soaps, cleaners, toothpaste. As I mentioned before, thyroid issues, muscle weakness, the chemicals found in this affects you. So how do you, how do you survive <laughs> without anti? microbial and antibacterial soaps. I'm going to show you in the next presentation. I'm going to take the question. All right, go ahead, love. You have a question? Um, the laws of health, we list the eight laws of health. Mm -hmm. um, you have water and you have fresh air. There's a passage of scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all thine art. And that is a part of the new start, right? Mm -hmm. And lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. Um, Ellen White said that it is important for us to show our children how to be, to do
do things in the home to keep the home tidy and clean and fresh. You understand? It's a part of their daily responsibility to do daily chores, wash the dishes, um, keep the bathroom clean and the house and refresh, right? As you are presenting, so you are sharing some of the things that they can use. Mm -hmm. And I would like to add that Ellen White says, education is very important in the home. So some of us go to public school, while some of us homeschool our children, mm -hmm. as well as health is important. Mm -hmm. Stewardship, your time, your money, your treasure, these are some of the things that Ellen White said that the Lord show her. Um, I would want to think that in order for us to gain the victory over the plan of the enemy, we have to look at the things that the Lord show the prophetess, the messenger of the Lord, the way to go forward in order for us to stand against the wiles of the enemy so that we will not be deceived Neither will we be tricked um, in terms of Satan's plan or scheme or his deception. So if we stand by the word that we are going to trust in God, comes what may. If we stand by the word to know that God has his plan and no no scheme or no deception of Satan can manipulate God's plan. So it is important also to show our children how it is important to be helpful in, helpful in the home as they use the different chemicals that you have here where they can use it to tidy the home or clean the home yes. or help to tidy the home. But we have to also remember not only to teach our children domestic, uh, uh, domestical, educate them domestically, but also educate them to lift them heavenward, to think positive, awesome, so that they can grow in the wisdom and the knowledge and the statue of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And boy, we have a preacher here, right? And she made some really powerful points, right? Because as we mentioned, the mind is where the battle is of the enemy. And we want to ensure that we're putting our mind in the best condition to have that clarity of thinking, to make good decisions. And you know, ultimately, if you don't have clarity of mind by your environment, definitely you won't be able to even, you know, understand what the prophet and Christ is saying. So this is, goes right back to your point, sister is that God is educating his people into how we can protect ourselves. Brother, you have a point, a question? Yes, I, I do have a point, Miss. Um, I love to listen to things like this, right? Yes. I'm not that young, so I'm from the old school. Yes. I do remember first time people, you, you touch a lot of things that, con that, that, that concerns me. Mm -hmm. And you're asking us to change some of these things for a healthy reason. Mm -hmm. But I remember first time when I was growing up, people never have all these things, right? All that we are using now. Mm -hmm. And them never smell too good. First time, right? And if we go back to it, I know that you tell us something that we can use, right? If we go back to it now, it's not the same kind of result we are going to have if we go back to, 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 to the old time life. Because a lot of people cannot, we, we not manage a lot of things. Like you said, the information is good, right? Is there any other way? Because I tell you that first time people never smell too good when I grow up. When I'm from my community alone, right? No. Will we still have that problem? Good question. 
Good question. Let me answer that. Because we know that our old time folks, they were using these over here, right? For hygiene, because I grew up with an old mother to one. Cleaning is one of the things. There are certain things, that's why health is holistic. This is just one element. Because the truth is that if you have proper diet, right? If you look on nutrition, a lot of the reasons why we smell the way we smell is because of the toxins that are in our body from the food we eat. And not just from what we eat, it's how we eat, right? So I remember as a young person, my mother, we never have roll on. It was lime underneath your arm right and it worked even now i do not use the regular deodorant that every the antiperspirant i use an aluminum free deodorant and when i was changing i was able to switch easily when my friends and colleagues were changing over to the aluminum because it doesn't clog your pores it allows you to perspire and it neutralizes the bacteria right but when my other colleagues were changing over, they smelled awful. And one of the reasons was that they ate completely different from how I ate. I was practicing the laws of health. They weren't. So when I'm encouraging them to switch because I don't want the aluminum, which is what we're going to discuss, we don't want the aluminum deodorant because it causes other issues. But I have to take them through a arm detox with charcoal first, and then we transition to the regular degular. So it's holistic, eight laws. So if you practice the eight laws of health, some of the concerns that we have, we won't have them. And then another thing is that sometimes we don't, we want to smell sweet. How about not having an odor at all? How about just not smelling that's okay too right because sometimes we have good body odors you know but we just want that extra you understand so we put on these extra chemicals when we actually don't need it right so it's just con um, considering making a holistic change and i know that it is hard to bear the hope is that when you make one good decision one change over time, you'll be more confident, and you see it work, you'll be more confident to make another change, and another change, and another change, and hopefully you get to where you need to be, right? But the truth is that to every action, there's a reaction, there's a consequence to your actions. So even though it's hard to bear, it is something that we must choose if we want a particular results right so i hope i answered that question so i'm going to hurriedly speed through because i realize that the time is going and i'll answer all other questions at the end of the presentation so we're moving on to the next slide how do we make or do it yourself hand soap simple Recipes. All you'll need for this is distilled water, castile soap, almond oil, essential oils, and an empty soap pump. Add half a cup of distilled water and half a cup of castile soap, along with one tablespoon of almond oil, which is great for moisturizing, and 20 drops of your favorite essential oils, which will help the soap smell delightful. Shake it up in the bottle, and now you're ready to wash your hands. Great. Now, next, moving on to, the, the question is, because I want to address it, just in case I don't get to at the end, why would it be difficult to make the switch? The more, is it cost? Is it time? Cost? 
Why are we assuming that it's going to be more expensive than what you're already spending? Is that an assumption? It reminds me of when I became, when, you know, when I'm, I'm talking to persons and I tell them that I don't eat meat, I'm vegan, and they say, oh, it's so expensive, you know? But being someone who used to eat meat and then stop eating meat, I have the documentation on my budget. And when I converted to veganism, well, I like to say health reformer, right? Plant-based. My food bill cut to a third the cost. It was actually cheaper. Why? Because I kept it simple. Sometimes we want to force God's law to replicate something that we're used to. So we want the, 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 the meat. So we get the fake meat and we get the fancy this and the fancy. That's expensive. But what about your peas, your beans, your fruits, your nuts? Compare three pounder chicken to three pounder peas. What's more expensive? And three pounder peas are going to last you longer than three pounder chicken. Compare vegetable to meat, although the price of vegetable is kind of high, but it's still cheaper. It's still cheaper. So why do you think it is more expensive? My research on the market demonstrated that these were within the same price range. The issue is that many people, just like the bleach, these are in concentrated forms. So if you use the manufacturer's instruction and dilute them accordingly to match what is there out on the market, it's the same price point. That's a fact. So, what is preventing us from making the switch would be a knowledge gap. You can, if you have time on your hand, it is even cheaper to go this way and do it yourself. So, my brother, my sister, what would prevent you from making the change? So we're going on to the next. Scented candles, air freshener. Smelly stuff that we used to clean, it has what we call phthalates, right? And these phthalates and benzene and styrene, they cause, they're linked to cancer, autism, birth defects, kidney damage, skin problem, migraines, allergy, and neurotoxicity. So you see, when you throw that chemical, and you're wiping down the place, you know which chemical I'm talking about, and the place smells fresh, what are you inhaling? Are you damaging your kidney? Are you encouraging eczema that a lot of our kids are experiencing now? What do you do instead? Baking soda, good. It's very good to get rid of odor, vinegar, essential oils. I have a two-year-old, you know, the pool bin don't smell so good. I just get a cotton ball, drop some essential oils on it, put it in the bin, put the, bag, um, the plastic bag in there, put the diaper in there, take it out, change it weekly. No odor. A few drops on cotton ball. We're good. Beeswax, put a little scented oil in your beeswax, makes your own candle, but I have a better solution. Next slide. I love the fact that when I came in here, I saw these plants. You know that these plants are ear purifying plants. You know the snake plant? 
the filet, what do you call it? Filet de drone. <laughs> I get tongue twisted. Right? The dumb cane, the spider plant, the peace lily. Next slide. They are very, very good to purify the air. So get some of these plants in your homes and that will take, off the impurity, take care of the impurity in your air. But you don't want to be adding unnecessary impurity, right? Now, moving on to the third um, household toxic powder that we put on our baby. Right? It causes issues. Even companies who make powder, the talcum in the powder, baby powder, they had to pay out over $700 million in lawsuits in, I think it was 2017. What is the replacement? Cornstarch, right? Next slide. Dry cleaning chemicals, a lot of us don't do dry cleaning here, but you know, for those who work in the dry cleaning industry, you know, you're at risk. These are some of the, what you can use instead, wet cleaning or liquid carbon dioxide. Other, moving on to number six, I'm trying to get to the ones that affect the, cause the VOCs, vinyl, shower curtain, the floor, yeah, it's an issue. It gives off toxic fumes that causes um, asthma, well, causes um, respiratory illnesses, um, liver, brain, breast cancers, leukemia, lymphoma associated with vinyl. So if you consider putting in vinyl floor, you probably have to do something else. And moving on quickly, when you're taking up your cleaners, look for some of these chemicals. The ammonia, you want to stay away from that. Sulfates, parabens, and you can also do it yourself recipe. I'm going to skip over a couple of the videos that I have. If you want the information, feel free to reach out to me afterwards so you can get your recipe, but you can get safer products out there as well. Next slide. Skip all purpose cleaners. Skip the videos, please. Yes. Skip. All right, so. One of the things that I want to point out as you're going out there looking for products on the counter, you want to look for that logo, the one that, call, that is called Safer Choice. When you see um, cleaning agents with that, you know that it is effective, but you also know that it is safe. And it's safer, right? So that's what you want to look out for when you're buying products on the shelf. Next slide. Flame retardants, we're going to move along quickly to pesticides. We know the harm. this is what I want us to get to. We know that pesticides are harmful. But another toxic chemical that we use in the home every day, not the pesticide, go forward please, is your non-stick pots as well as your aluminum pots, right? While it doesn't go in the air, it leaches into your food and you're ingesting aluminum and aluminum is associated with all, Alzheimer's disease and the other, whole, other host of diseases, right? So you want to get pots that are stainless steel, cast iron, or old good time dutchy, you know? That's one of the reasons why our parents didn't get a lot of these issues, right? The ceramic, you want to go onto that as well as the deodorant. Many of our deodorant, they have aluminum in there. You wanna switch it out, 
right? And aluminum is also associated with infertility and um, hypertension. So these are some of the things we want to consider, you know, as we are basically cleaning. So the question is, again, are you fighting grime or harming your health, arresting your health? So I hope this information added value and I hope we can make a couple of changes that not only will basically purify our air, but also help us to have better health. So, sis, can I ask? If it, I, I would take a few questions in a minute or so if you have any questions or all the questions were asked already. Any questions? What about Teflon pots? T-E-F-L-O-N. I think it's the Teflon that is toxic. I think it's the Teflon in the nonstick. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you want to avoid those. Right. All right, so I have one question for the congregation. Can I see a phrase of hand if you have learned something new and are willing to make at least one adjustment in your daily operations? Great. Thank you for listening and I do have you, hope you have a uh, spirit-filled rest of the day. Back over to you, Sister Diana. Thank you so much, Sister Ch Satania. What do you say, brethren? Amen. What a wealth of information we have gathered this afternoon. Do you agree? Wonderful. Blessings. Hi, Sister Esty. I'm just seeing Sister Esty. But we want to thank Sister Satania through in a very special way for sharing with us our experience, our knowledge. She was in chemical engineering for 11 years and she would have seen the effects of these chemicals. And now she's a health transformer. And we are so happy that she took the time to come and share with us here at the Sydenham Seventh-day Adventist Church. So as we finish, let's remember that the choices we make in our cleaning routines have ripple effects beyond our homes. By ditching toxic cleaners, we are not only safeguarding our health, but we are also contributing to a cleaner environment. And so this afternoon, as we come to the end of another Sabbath, I'm saying, here's to cleaner homes, clearer minds, and a brighter future, as I'm sure that many of us will be transiting to the healthier choice. And she showed us those self-care things that we can do, do it ourselves, and then we also have those products right there that we can also utilize. So I'm encouraging us after we would have left um, the building and we go on the outside that we see Sister Susania on the outside as she will share some more about the healthy alternatives that we can use in our homes. We also want to thank the members from the Elshire District of Churches, Unit Vocals, Sister Leon and, and her son. I try to remember the son's name, but not to worry. When he comes forward, I'm going to ask him to share it with us. And so we're going to have Sister Leon and, and our son singing for us, and then we'll have unique vocals do that last song as the person that is responsible for our Vesper um, service will come. Be blessed, everyone.
His name is Daniel Leon. Amen. You know, when I, when I listen to the presentation, it seems as if I have to throw out a lot in my home. It's like you were looking in my home, right? All those chemicals I really need to get rid of. And so, with all of this, this, you know, this commitment that we're making, you know, we are looking forward to that day when, they, when this earth will be free from pollutants, right? And so we are going to press on this evening, and the song that we'll be sharing is Press On.
Amen. Loving God and loving each other because of the love, the story will never, never, never end. The love of God will never end. We have come to the end of the Sabbath. The sun is already set. And we are still in the sanctuary. I share a very, very, very short word. And then we will be out of here. Loving Father, we thank you for your Sabbath. We thank you for the peace that passeth all understanding. We lift you up tonight and we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. As we share these words, we ask you, Lord, that you will place your words on my lips and place them into the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. The psalmist David says, the Lord, the who? The Lord is my shepherd. I what? I shall not want. When we look at this passage of scripture in that the Lord is my shepherd. Who is the Lord? The creator of what? Heaven and earth. The one who what? Sustain our entire being. So we are saying the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He what? He maketh me to lie down. Where? In green pastors and if the ruler of all things made me to lie down in green pastures why should I be afraid for what he restored my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for what not for my sake but for what is name's sake so this week when we we go through our trials this week when we go through our tests this week when the challenge bombard us help we must remember that what we are overcomers and we will be overcomers not for ourselves but for the sake of who the sake of the lord he, yea though i what walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will what fear no evil for who though the creator is with me for what his rod and his staff do what Comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. The final verse says, Surely, surely. And when we hear the word surely, it's assured. It's, it's, it's come with perfection. It comes with assurance. It comes with certainty. It comes with a promise. It comes with with what again? All the good things that we can think of. It said, surely goodness and mercy shall what? Follow me, no doubt about it. When we put our lives in the lives of Jesus, when we put our hands in the hands of the man that calmed the sea, when we put our hands in the man that stilled the water, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And for all of this week. And for the rest of our lives. And I will dwell. And I will dwell. And you shall dwell. And all of us will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. Forever. And I say, Amen. Let us turn our hymnals to... 602. Thank you, Elder. 602. As we stand and sing this final hymn, as we leave the sanctuary on this the Sabbath of our Lord. So long, oh 
soon we shall enter the glorious home and join in the conqueror's song. Oh, brother, be faithful, for what should we prove unfaithful to him? Oh, I've shown such deep, such unbounded and infinite love. Who oh, died to redeem us his own? Oh, brother, be faithful, the city of gold. Prepare for the good and the blessed. Is waiting his portal of prayer to unfold. Then, brother, prophet, for not long shall we stay in weariness here, and for long time, dark night of sorrow is wearing away. We hear to the glorious morn. Oh, brother, be faithful, his son will descend. Creation omnipotent King, while legions of angels is charred attend and palm victory bring. O oh, brother, be faithful, and soon shall the way the Savior pronounce a glad word. Well done, faithful servant, a title is clear to enter the glory of the Lord. O oh, brother, be faithful, eternity is theirs, shall tell for thy faithfulness now, when bright smiles of gladness shall scatter the tear. Run and gleam on thy brow. Oh, brother, be faithful. The promise is sure that waits for the faithfulness side to reign with the ransom immortal and pure and ever with Jesus above. Father, we know that one day this race will be over. All our trials and tribulation will come to an end. For you, Lord, will burst the eastern skies. You will finally say, death will die. Sin will be no more. We shall bask in your presence forevermore. Oh God, we pray that as we embark upon this untried week, that we here in the centrum, along with those who have joined us online, along with all the faithful on earth, will remain faithful and true to you. Until then, Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, keep us safe this night. Secure from all our fears. May angels guide us while we sleep. Till morning light appears. Amen. We want to thank you for joining us here at Sydenham. For those who have joined us in our AY program, we want to thank you for gracing us with your present. The Sydenham Seventh-day Adventist Church appreciate you. And we also appreciate those who have joined us online. We thank you for joining us. We ask that you remember tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, we join online. We join online. We ask you to join us online 
on the Sydney Seventh-day Adventist YouTube channel where we will be worshiping together. Thank you for joining us. Elder, have some words for us. Yes, so please join us online tomorrow. We have a very special speaker, former elder of this church, who will be making the presentation for tomorrow night. I see very, very lovely products here. I hope I can get some of it that's here. Uh, but deacons, please, I'm going to ask you to meet with me at the back there on the extreme left at the back. Please meet with me just now, uh, right now. We have a meeting just now, deacons. That's it, brethren. Thank you. God bless you. And see you again um, tomorrow night at our regular Sunday night meeting. God bless you.